Sometimes you need a really obnoxious sort of like, hey you, yeah, go. I was gonna say go yourself, but that's not appropriate. I'm Sung Won Cho, I'm a voice actor, and I also have a YouTube channel called ProZD. I do short skits and nerdy stuff and basically whatever I feel like doing. Lysanderoth, you are behind all this? Yes, it was I. You have your mother's eyes. Father. I'm gonna do some voices and try to describe how I do them. I may not be the best guy to ask for how do you properly, physically do all these voices. I kind of just go with my gut, but you know what, that's okay. They already asked me here, so too bad. I get asked a lot to do kind of like these grand old king or god voices. The first role I ever did was uh, Zeus in a game called Apotheon, and he's kind of this sort of gravelly sort of old voice. You have the audacity to invade my kingdom. How would I describe how to do that? I always try to have a little texture, a little growl to it. Going like this, uh, that sort of that's the sort of growl you can kind of inject into a specific voice. There was a game called The Hat in Time. Uh, I voiced the owls in that, in that game. They were these, these very nervous little owls. They were just tiny little guys. And so my voice goes up quite a bit in pitch. Give it a little shaky qual. Ooh, oh no, the, I'm very nervous about what's, what's going on. Because the characters were so small and nervous, that sort of shaky quality I felt was very important. Pitch-wise, you can kind of go up and kind of talk like this, sort of a higher sort of Hey, I'm kind of like a protagonist kind of voice. That kind of range, higher range, you can go up there. And then if you go up there and then kind of go even higher and more cartoony and then nervous, you kind of get that sort of uh, little, little owl voice. So I have a deep voice. And so oftentimes I'll get asked to do deep voice characters. I voice a character named Toro in Nomad of Nowhere, a Rooster Teeth animated show. And Toro's kind of a... Um... He's like a more confident version of me. So they wanted him to not sound super growly. Instead, they wanted him to sound very casual, very, very, notice I'm doing this <laughs> without even realizing it. So oftentimes in the booth, physicality sometimes comes into play. Like with this, my, I instinctively put up my arms like this. He's kind of a big, beefy guy. Yes, I have. Thank you for noticing. With that kind of deep voice, and then you can kind of make it dopier if you want. You can kind of put like a Brooklyn accent on it. And then he's kind of, uh, a little more, if you do it in this kind of tone, he's a friendlier kind of guy. Hey, it's me, your, your pal. But then you can also kind of go, I don't know, stereotypical like, uh, like the big guy, oh yeah boss, I'm gonna uh, beat the shit out of you, that kind of voice. So a lot of times in cartoons you hear voices and a lot of those voices are actually just impressions of classic actors. Like a very popular one is Ed Wynn. Butter, oh thank you, butter. <laughs> sort of this kind of voice. It's you have thought of a lisp on your voice and a very uh, whimsical quality. Pat Buttram, sort of a, sort of a southern kind of, kind of voice. Hush your mouth. You could do that for a, like a prospector or something like, yes sir, you kind of add a little uh, spittle to it. You can make it a sort of a prospector kind of voice. Sometimes you want to play like a snooty character. And I like to do what's basically, it's not a British accent, but it's more like a, like a mid-Atlantic accent. So it's sort of this kind of voice. It's very, very dignified, very precise with its pronunciation and its diction. So when it's time to play a character with more of a regal presence, it's, you have to really focus. You have to really focus on your words. Uh, if you want to do like an old timey voice, like uh, I'm talking like, it's the Colgate Power Hour with that sort of uh, old 50 sort of announcer type voice. You. Really let that sort of texture go in on words like voice. When you watch old movies and you think everyone sounds kind of weird, it's because they're all doing mid-Atlantic accents. It's like a weird, almost like fake accent that they're all doing because they think that's how people should sound. There's a common misconception that it's about the voice, but I would say the acting is the most important part. Even if you can do lots of different voices, it doesn't matter unless you can also act. I'm not sure if this was helpful at all, but uh, I had fun doing it. If you feel inspired to pursue it yourself, then I think, I think you just gotta practice, just gotta get out there and perform and do it. That's the easiest way to start is just, just start doing it, so.